Your attention, masters, mistresses, all systems functional for the Everything Geek podcast. Hey, this is Rich McDonald, and I play Commander David Mason on Call of Duty Black Ops 2. And you're listening to Everything Geek Podcast. Hey, it's James Arnold Taylor, the voice of Obi-Wan Kenobi and Master Poe Cool in Star Wars The Clone Wars, and you're listening to Everything Geek, the podcast. Hey, it's Leif Ganfert. I played Uncle Ben's killer in The Amazing Spider-Man, and you're listening to... The Everything Geek Podcast. Hello, I'm Simon Fisherbecker. You probably know me better as Dorian Moldovar from Doctor Who, or the Fat Friar from Harry Potter. And this is Everything Geek Podcast. Face it, Tiger. You just hit the jackpot with the Everything Geek Podcast. You're listening to the Everything Geek Podcast, bringing you interviews from your favorite films and TV shows every week, and all of the latest news. Here's your host, Rory Williamson. Hello, everyone. You're listening to the Everything Geek Podcast. I'm your host, Rory, and joining us today is a very special guest. We have actress Nicole Mitchell who is best known for the voice of Carly in The Walking Dead Telltale Game and who is part of the production staff slash additional production support on Star Wars The Clone Wars. So how are you, Nicole? I'm good. How are you guys? I'm very well, thank you. It's a pleasure to have you join us on the podcast. Oh, thanks for having me. And Carly, of course, is my favorite character in the game, so... Yay! Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. Well, I'm glad to know uh, that she had, uh, she, she, she still remembered. <laughs> yeah. I still refuse to believe what happened, but that's another story. <laughs> <laughs> Traumatized, are you? <laughs> yeah, very. Like, I was talking to, we were talking to Gavin Hammond, Kenny, a few weeks ago, and I was like, oh, yeah. we were talking about that episode, and I was like, and yeah, Kenny was my favorite character, and he was like, yeah, I know, and I'm like, what? I was thinking to myself, what? I never said it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm sure, I'm sure he's, he's probably, uh, heard heard from a few people on say like uh twitter or social media saying god how yeah. could lily have done that to carly and uh yeah. <laughs> the, the actress of lily is has has gotten an earful <laughs> yeah. she, did, she does a great job i'll give her that but my immediate reaction was go on where's that option to let me shoot her <laughs> <laughs> i know i've gotten i've gotten a lot of um email messages and uh, posts uh, about, you know, is there any way, is there any way we can avoid that? And can I get back at Lily for doing that? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Poor I, Lily. <laughs> you know, there's like someone did a fan fiction storyline out there of a storyline that could have had Kaylee survive. Like I read it and I was like, wow, that's actually logical and it makes sense. And then I come back and I'm like watching walkthroughs of season two of the game, like the new episodes, and I'm like, "Where's Carly?" <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny. No, I haven't seen that yet, but I know that there's there's um, fanfic out there having her survive, and you know, and Lee survive, and and them, you know, uh, uh, Lee and Carly getting together and raising yeah. Clementine as their own, and. <laughs> Yeah, wishful well, thinking, I, people. Wishful thinking. Yeah. I won't go as far as the Lee one because that's impossible. But the one I read with the Kelly one is actually pretty plausible. It was a good scene. Oh really? Oh wow! I have to check that out. <laughs> like, uh, I'm trying to remember off the top of my head, but basically, like it, it actually starts like just after the events of the second episode, the one of the cannibals. Oh um, yeah. And, like, basically their experiences through that and has some, like, it has actually a lot of things in between the two, like, other events. And there's, like, it, like there's, like, kind of prequel events to stuff we hear about in, you know, the third episode we don't actually see, you know, like, Ben being, Ben being, you know, persuaded, I'll put it, by the bandits to get them the supplies. I mean, it wasn't uh-huh. much of a persuasion. It was a bit more than that, but that's the word I'm using for it. Um, and like so much stuff like that, and there was also one thing with you know, and it was kind of hinted actually in the first episode of the game, you know, with uh-huh. Lee having nightmares of when you know he saw his wife and the senator together, 
and how it would like have a kind of how, I don't remember how the person put it, but like I'll just say a raging bull in his head. Um, <laughs> that's how I'm gonna go with it. Um, and like how whenever someone he loved was in danger, it would like ignite this raging bull. So when Lily is a bit, <laughs> Lily is a bit to shoot Curly, like the raging bull comes alive. He basically. I think runs into Curly and like sends her flying against the uh, RV, and then he like all <laughs> of the same movement grabs Lily, and quite similarly to how he does it in the game itself, you know, kind yeah. of shoves against the RV, and I'm like, right, yeah, right, yeah, Kale, why didn't you do that? <laughs> yeah, yeah, no kidding, that's so funny. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, some some of these some of these um, people that write the fanfic, I mean, they they could. Uh, actually be probably video game writers themselves i mean some some of it is really actually very good you know yeah. uh-huh. and you read it and go you know this is actually possible this would almost kind of work you know so it's 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 pretty amazing but actually speaking of the 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 the, the dream that you just mentioned uh, lee having a dream Someone, um, a very resourceful fan at, at, at some point got into some of the, gosh, I'm so non-tech, so I'm probably going to use terms that are absolutely inappropriate for, for what I'm about <laughs> to try to describe. But um, uh, a fan got into um, the, the game and was able to decode some stuff and reveal some, uh, some tracks that were actually thrown away from the get that didn't make it into the game and one yeah, of those I've heard of it, some of those did you hear some of it yeah and one of yeah. it is a dream sequence that lee has on you know depending on who you save in episode one either carly or doug um one of us comes back and kind of haunts lee in his dream and oh, you hear yeah. yeah you hear the the conversation and you know i think they 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 probably dumped that because well i don't know to me it made carly sound much more sinister and kind of crazy psycho uh possibly even a little bit evil in 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 lee's dream basically saying why did you kill me lee (laughs) <laughs> why did you let me live Glee? you know i mean they were probably thinking okay she sounds a little too psycho you know we want carly to be a little bit more you know a little cooler than that uh maybe she shouldn't haunt lee after she dies so <laughs> yeah i don't i don't think that would have worked in the slightest but yeah just, exactly yeah. yeah it was probably smart on telltale's writer's part part to uh yeah to cut that out but it, it's interesting that that somebody actually found it and i they posted yeah. it somewhere it's probably on youtube somewhere but but uh yeah <laughs> you never know what can come back later on after the game has already been released so yeah definitely like all this you know <laughs> stuff we and it's so great with you know basically anything be it a video game tv show movies except oh, you yeah. know say after they're released we find out about all these things that could have been in it but weren't you know I was um, just as interested to find out about those than seeing, you know, the content that does get released. You know what I mean? Oh, sure. Because it, it can kind of give you a little bit of an insight at, to the to the creative process, how these characters were developed and what the writers maybe and the producers decided maybe just didn't really work. But you could kind of see sort of the development process when you discover these kind of hidden hidden things, you know? So it's, I, I, I find stuff like that pretty fascinating, even though, like I said, I don't know the first thing about decoding anything. <laughs> Nor do I. And I run a <laughs> podcast and it's actually kind of sad because I run a podcast and I'm not the techie person behind it. <laughs> <laughs> You're just the personality. <laughs> I'm the personality. I bring the personality to the show. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, well, you pull your weight then. <laughs> yeah, I have a lot of it to pull. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Uh, so, yeah, getting to the questions, uh, my first question for you is, how did you decide you wanted to be an actress? Oh, well, gosh, that goes way, way back to um, when I was in 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 
grammar school or primary school. I mean, that was, um, gosh, I've been involved in the arts, uh, since, since I was a a little kid. Um, I'm an only child, only children are kind of (laughs) weird. Well, I guess I should speak for myself. You know, we have to keep ourselves entertained. So, you know, I know when I was growing up, I, I was always making up stories and, and, um, I had a tape recorder and I would record, um, little plays and things into my tape recorder and, and play it back and, um, you know, make myself laugh, you know, cause I had nobody else around to play with. <laughs> so, um, uh, you know, and of course pff, there was no way to know that that was eventually decades later turn into a, to a career. But, um, but yeah, I, I, I was involved in drama and, uh, all the way through school and, um, uh, attended a, a couple of acting schools, uh, after I graduated high school and, um, um, started doing extra work in films, you know, background actors and things like that. I did a little bit of on camera stuff, not a whole lot. <clears throat> my, my interest was a little bit more focused on audio. Um, if I got into, to music and, and was in a, a couple of bands and toured, toured the country. And then, uh, when I was done with that, I, I got a job at Lucasfilm and, um, uh, at Lucasfilm, I, I started doing scratch voices, uh, for, uh, Star Wars, the Clone Wars. And that's how I got more focused on voice acting specifically. Um, that was probably about, oh, maybe seven or eight years ago, I started doing that. <clears throat> and I'm not sure if you're familiar with, with, uh, the, the animation process and, and the use of scratch voices in the animation process. Are you, are you familiar with that? Not particularly. <laughs> well, what they, what they, uh, what productions will do is they will have, um, uh, sometimes professional actors, sometimes just people on the crew. Um, if they can do a convincing enough job conveying, you know, the dialogue in, in, in the production, they'll have, um, someone record the dialogue for the various characters, uh, when the episode is still in production. Um, so the animators and everyone who's working on it has something to, to, to work with, to work around. And so the scratch voice goes in before the, the, um, the actual actor who is that character can come in and record the final dialogue. So the scratch, the scratch voice is basically just, just the working, uh, audio while the production is still in process. Um, and then say like for, for instance, um, Ahsoka Tano, that was, uh, uh, Ashley Eckstein, um, who did the voice for that. Well, the scratch voice was someone else on the crew. Um, and, uh, while, while the production was still being worked on and then as it got closer to completion, then they would bring in Ashley and Ashley would record the final dialogue. That's very interesting. Yeah, it's kind of it's kind of a neat yeah. process, and that's kind of how I got yeah. started in in voiceover specifically was doing the scratch voices for a lot of the characters for the Clone Wars. Nice gives a gives a greater insight into how much uh, you know actually goes into you know it's not just you know the cast themselves you know the right. ones we know you know recording the lines like Ashley and all the others like as pe- even people like yourself and other crew members you know providing voices even before them, which is pretty cool. It's very interesting. Yeah. It's, it's, it's a, a pretty lengthy process. There's a lot of people working on, on an episode on any, any given time. And they're all kind there's, there's usually a few, a few episodes that are overlapping. And so they're in different stages of production as they go along. And, um, yeah, being able to do the scratch voices is, was just like a really, really cool perk that I was lucky enough to, to, um, to have given to me. Um, and, uh, it really changed the, the trajectory of, of, you know, what, what I'm doing now, uh, what my career is now. So I'm, I'm really grateful for that, for, you know, Dave Filoni, the, the supervising director on the Clone Wars was, was good enough to, to, uh, throw some of that scratch 
voice work my way. And, and as a result, I'm, you know, flash forward, I'm, I'm now a professional voice actor. So it's the, the Clone Wars are, are, will always have a super, super soft spot in my heart because, you know, it's pretty much the reason why I'm doing what I'm doing now. So. Yeah, which is great, definitely. Um, my second question is, how did you first get involved with The Walking Dead? Um, <clears throat> well, I got, uh, you know, as, as all of us, uh, that, that did voices on the walking dead, um, uh, we all pretty much had it happen the same way, which is we, we, um, most of us are represented by the same, by the same agency in, in San Francisco. A few of us, um, may have gotten it from other agents. Uh, Dave Fenoy, who played, um, Lee Everett, I'm not sure if, if, uh, how how he was cast uh, maybe the same way, but I know for me uh, I got an audition from my agent, and um, they'll email email us uh, auditions, <clears throat> and I got some some uh, dialogue script for for Carly and a couple of other characters. I actually auditioned for Lily as well, and. Um, uh, I remember when I saw it, I remember thinking, wow, Walking Dead, this is going to be cool. Because I was familiar with The Walking Dead. I had, At that point, I think I had just seen the pilot episode of the TV show. I hadn't read any of the comics, but I had seen the pilot of the TV show. And just by virtue of the fact that it was wa- The Walking Dead, I knew it was going to be pretty cool. None of us knew how huge the game was actually going to become i think it was kind of came as a surprise to everybody involved how successful it and it ended up becoming but um initially when i saw it i thought it was i i I suspected it was going to be really cool so i auditioned for lily and for carly and ended up just booking carly pretty much straight away and uh it was awesome i was totally excited about it I wanted I, I wanted to get in on that so badly when I saw it. So <laughs> I was really, really happy when I booked it. So but yeah, it was the it was it was, it was pretty a pretty straightforward process. Very nice, yeah. My third question is what was the most memorable part of getting the voice Kylie? Well, it's it's kind of funny. I'll i I'll give you a two part answer on that. The um Apparently, according to Sean Vanneman, <laughs> who was the creative lead on the, the, the first season of The Walking Dead, um, he said one of the reasons why I got booked <laughs> for Carly was because in the audition, uh, I had, um, you know, kind of an acting scene, a kind of a lower key acting scene where there wasn't anything like super emergency going on. And then there was also my death scene in the audition. I mean, when telltale sends you auditions for, for things, they send you like the most extreme stuff that you can, cause they want to see, okay, can you just like have a normal conversation and then can you get completely shredded to bits, you know? Um, and uh, so Sean told me that one of the reasons why I got booked as Carly was because he thought I could act, but, but almost maybe even more importantly, I could shriek really loud. (laughs) 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 So, so, you know, when I, for I played the first episode of the walking dead and, um, after, you know, fairly soon after it came out, and I wanted to hear that death shriek. So I, you know, the first playthrough, I saved Doug. I didn't save Carly because um, I, I wanted to. <laughs> I wanted to hear if they used my, ah! you know, being torn apart by a Walker death scream. And I didn't really hear it that much. And I was like, "Damn, <laughs> they, I don't think they used it." Um, <laughs> but that would have been my most memorable. Uh, <laughs> part of playing Carly had they really used the shriek I mean I gave a blood curdling I'm gonna tear my throat out from screaming shriek in the studio and and it ended up not in there <laughs> I must have blown out the microphones or something I don't know but, <laughs> yeah um, 
That's but, the uh, only reason I can think of. <laughs> otherwise, <laughs> otherwise they have no excuse. You probably near killed yourself doing it. But I was like, damn it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I killed myself for that scream and it's nowhere. Um, <laughs> but, uh, uh, but you know, with, with what ended up, uh, being in the game, of course, the most memorable part for me is Carly's final departure in episode three. Um, that was, uh, that was pretty awesome actually. And I, I wasn't expecting that. I think that's probably why it's the most memorable part of playing Carly for me is, um, I knew from the very, very beginning before I laid down the first vocal voice track for, uh, for episode one, I, I already knew that Carly was going to meet her final demise in episode three, but I didn't know how that was going to happen. So I just assumed that, you know, it was probably going to be a walker that kills her. I mean, you know, it's a zombie apocalypse. That's probably a safe assumption, right? You know? Um, but, uh, so they didn't tell me until I went in to actually record episode three, that that's what was going to happen. And I remember when Sean told me that I was like, Oh man, the there's going to be some Carly fans that are going to be mad. They're not going to like that. <laughs> I'm and, guilty as charged. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, uh, and then when I actually saw it after the episode came out, I was, I was actually kind of surprised how much it, it affected me actually watching it happen <clears throat> because, you know, Lily's just so cold about it. You know, she almost has like a, almost like a blank stare on her face when she does it. And it's just, it's just kind of comes out of nowhere and it's, and it's kind of shocking. And I remember thinking, Oh, that that just kind of hit me in the stomach, <laughs> you know? So that was definitely the most memorable that and the little kiss on the cheek with Lee up on the balcony and, and uh, earlier in the episode, you know, yeah. tell, tell, sure. Tease their fans with that one. Oh, they're sadistic. <laughs> I They're know. sadistic. They 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 twist the knife. You know, they make you think something great is going to happen. Something, oh, Lee's going to find love in the zombie apocalypse, and you know, there's going to be a moment of tender tenderness. And yeah, that's all you get. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was all we got. <laughs> yeah, don't get too attached to these characters, man, because they're not. The chances are they're not going to last. I mean, it's Robert Kirkman's world, and if you know, if you're familiar with Robert Kirkman and all his other stuff, I mean, you know, it's it's almost never going to be a pretty ending. So, yeah. I mean, <laughs> what, what I like though is I kind of, for me, Percy. I'm not sure about some fans, but I have a good guess rate of who's going to die and in what episode and. That makes me become not, you know, completely overwhelmed or annoyed when someone dies, you know. So I suspect <laughs> who's going to die and who isn't. So, so you can prepare yourself. <laughs> yeah. Like, I, wa- I watched the recent episode and there was one or two deaths. I was like, oh, I love those characters, but I knew they were going to die. So, Oh, yeah. You know? I, think, I think probably a good sign of whether or not a character is going to die, if you start feeling any attachment <laughs> towards them whatsoever, yeah. you pretty much know they've got a target on their back. <laughs> yeah. Like an invisible sniper rifle, you know. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So my next question is, were you happy with Kylie's deaths? Uh, believe me, no is a good answer. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, uh, from a writing perspective, I, th- I, I, I have to say that, that um, I think, I think Telltale did, did a, did a, just a brilliant job with, um, with keeping true to the Robert Kirkman universe of, you know, care about someone and then kill them, you know, <laughs> you know, have, yeah. have people, have people like these characters, have people start to care about these characters and then pull their heart out and stomp on it. Cause that's, you know, that's basically what telltale did with Carly and, for a lot of people and for those that, that saved her, which from what I understand was a, you know, a pretty high, high percentage of the, the, the people when they, you know, they took the, 
took the tally of, you know, who saved Doug, who saved Carly. I think it was something like, you know, more than half saved, saved Carly. So for those people that saved Carly, you know, it was, it was a bummer, uh, probably to, 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 to see her taken out in an, and taken out by another character. Um, so I, you know, I, I, I think they did a great job writing her, her demise. And I, I think they did an awesome job keeping true to, Robert Kirkman's style in the walking dead universe. Um, and the, in episode one where you choose either Carly or Doug, I think they, they handled it really well in that scenario as well. Cause it kind of sets the, st- the stage. I mean, I know you have to choose, I think, is it between duck and Sean? Is it earlier in the episode? Yeah, it is. Yeah, but the the choice between Doug and Carly is is even a little bit more dramatic, I think. Uh, be, you know, between the yeah. music and the tension of what's going on at the moment, and mm-hmm. it kind of sets it kind of sets the tone for the game, mm-hmm. I think. Yeah. <clears throat> that- and also, also because earlier, um, like with the Duck Sean thing, no matter what choice you do, Duck lives, Sean and, dies, and the Sean bites di- it. Yeah. Yeah, and the only real difference is, like, if Lee chooses to help Sean, Sean, like, says to Herschel that uh, Lee tried to help me, and, yeah, that's pretty much it. I mean, it's even in some ways better to help Duck because, you know, Kenny will view you more highly in later episodes, whereas right, Herschel, right, exactly. Herschel's going to kick you off the farm anyway. Yeah, he tells you to get the hell out no matter what. So. Yeah. <laughs> So yeah, you might as well save duck and get on Kenny's good side, you know? So, um, but yeah, I, I, even though my character is no longer in the game as the result of telltale, you know, writing her out, uh, starting with season three, I think they, they did it very, very well. And there really isn't anything I, I would change about that because if you want to stay true to, you know, the darkness of the walking dead universe and that no one is safe. I think they did exactly what they should do. Honestly. Well, <laughs> <laughs> there might be a, dif- a difference of opinion there. And I understand. That. Yeah. No, I'm just joking. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, I would love to have seen maybe a little bit more romance between Carly and Lee. That would have been nice. Um, yeah. But, you know, just that there was even hinted at one, I think, mm. really yeah. kind of adds to the to the to the, the the tragicness of the situation, you know. So yeah. the only thing, though, I will never, ever forgive Telltale for, though, is in the you, have you seen the 400 Days DLC, you know, of I, those other characters? I haven't. Uh, you should avoid it then. Like, I was just watching walkthroughs of some of them, and one of them, the character is called Russell, who you're playing as, and, like, he's walking along the very area where um, Curly was killed, and you actually see Curly's... He, he actually passes Curly's body, and you see it all grotesque oh, and gross with yes, maggots yes. all over it, and I'm like, tell yes, her, I- why the hell would you do that to me? <laughs> yes, I have heard about that, because I've, I've had some, some Carly fans send me... Um, when there's when there's references to Carly in in uh, yeah. future episodes after you know after she dies in episode three, um, they'll they'll send me things. And one of the things that that a Carly fan sent me was a, 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 a screen capture <laughs> yeah. of of Carly's dead body, <laughs> dead decomposing body on the side of the road yeah. with a maggot on her face. <laughs> I was yeah, like, I right know. on, tell, tell. There they go again, sticking the knife yeah. in and twisting it, you know? <laughs> I know, right? I mean, like, it was bad <laughs> enough that Carly died, but at least I could actually go past it, go on with the story. Then we get that, and I feel like I've been yeah. slapped I feel like I've been slapped right across the face. You know what that was for? That was for like all the people that still believe Elvis is alive somewhere eating yeah. cheeseburgers. You know, they're like, they yeah. want to make sure that all the Carly fans out there know she's dead. You know, yeah. <laughs> and here she is. You know, so, it still uh, was a big slap in the face for me, though. <laughs> 
I mean, I always believed he was dead, but come on. At least no need to go <laughs> that far. You have to shove my face in it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, at least in season two, there was actually a much nicer and better reference to Cody. Like, um, when this guy, um, who at the time is a stranger, but is actually the villain, um, comes to the cabin that Clementine is staying in. He asks, he says, hello there, what's your name? And there's several options. She can tell the truth. She can say nothing, I think. She can say, who are you, or something like that. And the final option is to say to lie and say, I'm Curly. And I'm like, yes. <laughs> That's awesome. See, gone but, but not forgotten. <laughs> That's yeah. awesome. <laughs> and then it just shows how much Curly meant to Clementine, if you know she would consider saying that. I mean, I was just like, yes, now that's a reference I want. (laughs) (laughs) That's really cool. Yeah, see, that's Telltale going back and say, telling people, remember the characters you liked? Here's a reminder that they're not here anymore. (laughs) (laughs) At least this was a nicer reminder this time. (laughs) Yeah, they were a little bit kinder this time. Yeah. Hopefully, hopefully, uh, you know, poor deadly or zombie lead depending on your choice at the end of episode five won't turn up somewhere because that'll just send some people over the edge i'm sure <laughs> yeah i definitely will <laughs> <laughs> yeah crazy though <laughs> um so my next question which you kind of answered earlier then so i might change it just a little bit and with the scratch voices for the clone voice, uh, which characters did you normally have to do scratch voices for? Um, let's see. I did uh, uh, Satine. Do you remember Satine? Yes, I remember uh, Satine. Another one I still cannot believe about. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. I know. Yeah, I. <laughs> Yeah, that was that was kind of unexpected. When I heard about that one too, I was like, "Oh, wow!" <laughs> yeah, I don't, th- I don't think anyone's gonna be expecting Satine to to go the way she did. Um, so Satine and uh, let's see, uh, Asajj Ventress. Um, nice. Let's see, uh, uh, Ventress of course was always such a blast. Um, you know, Nikki Futterman, who who is the actress who plays uh, Ventress in the Clone Wars, she is so talented. I mean, that I've never met her, but I've heard a lot of her her work on the show, obviously, and she is phenomenal. So, just getting to to do the scratch voice of Ventress was a, just a total blast for me. I love doing that. She was my favorite character. Um, and uh, from time to time, I would do uh, um, the, the scratch voice for uh, Padme and um, and a whole bunch of other just various voices um, as they needed them. But uh, Ventress and, um, and Satine were probably the two that I did the most. Um, there were, let's see, there was another... Um, there was a female bounty hunter, and I, what, her name is totally escaping me. Um, she's she was the, the 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 tall one with the her head was shaved except for the the um, kind of the the dreads that came out of the top of her head. I'm sure I know you know which character I'm talking. Or a sing. Yeah, I was, yeah. <laughs> I was getting completely confused for a second. I was like, "Who is Jed's out of there?" <laughs> <laughs> yeah, now I get yeah. it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, Ara Singh was another one that I that I did uh, fairly regularly. A little bit later on, when she when she came in later on in in the Clone Wars um, series, um, and, and like I said, and a whole bunch of others as as they came up. There's a lot of characters that kind of go in and out of the the the, the series. Um, that they would call me in to, to record for. And, um, it was always really, really fun and interesting. And we would, we would have some guest directors that would come in and direct an episode. Um, so it was really cool getting to not only work with the show's, um, uh, episodic directors, cause you had Dave Filoni, who was the, supervising director and then you had a group of directors that were working just underneath him um directing the individual episodes and from time to time 
uh, they would have in a guest director like um, Dwayne Dunham, for instance, who was the original in real life. He was the original Boba Fett. Uh, he was the first person to put on the Boba Fett costume um, before uh, he made an appearance in in uh, one of the Star Wars movies. The original Empire. Yeah, in in yeah, before before Empire was shot, and they were pitching the idea of uh, Boba Fett and his costume to George Lucas. Um, Dwayne Dunham was the guy who first put on the costume, you know, for the pitch for George. So he was a um, a guest director on the Clone Wars, and <clears throat> he was awesome to work with total perfectionist, really, um, super, super detail oriented and really interesting and fun to work with. And I learned actually quite a lot from working with the different directors and the, 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 the different styles that they all had. So. That's very nice. Were you a Star Wars fan before you got involved with the Clone Wars? I was, uh, it was a little bit more on my peripheral. Um, but yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, I saw the star Wars movies. I mean, I'm old enough to wear, <laughs> I probably shouldn't be saying this, but <laughs> I am old enough to where I actually saw the original trilogy in the theater, you know, when it came out. So, <clears throat> and I, I loved it. I absolutely loved it. I've seen the original trilogy. I can't tell you how many times now. And, um, I probably understand. <laughs> <laughs> and of course my, my husband is, is a total star Wars fan. And when I was working at Lucasfilm, he was not allowed to watch it at home. I'm like, all right, dude, I'm off the clock. No more star Wars. <laughs> <laughs> Poor guy got punished because I was working at Lucasfilm. So he couldn't watch any star Wars at home, but <laughs> I um, feel bad for him. <laughs> Now he can watch all the Star Wars he wants, but, yeah. <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah, I was, I was a fan before I started working at Lucasfilm and I became much, much more of a fan after I started working and became just completely immersed in the whole, I mean, it was Star Wars five days a week, 9am to 5pm, <laughs> you know, how can you not become even more of a Star Wars fan when you're around it all the time, you know? Yeah, so. uh, I, I guess being around my collection of figures and autographs counts, so I'm around <laughs> it all the time. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, I think it counts. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm looking at a picture right now of you and um, and Ashley Eckstein, Ahsoka Tano. I was wondering if you noticed that. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, so I totally believe you. Um, where was that taken? Uh, celebration Europe in Germany last year. In oh, Dubai. awesome! Yeah. Oh, very she, cool. Aside from, aside from her and Filoni himself, they were the only Clone Wars guests there. Like, and I was like, "Come on, bring some more voice cast over from the Clone Wars." And like, I, just, I know. Yeah, and Lucasfilm were like, "Sorry, we don't think people would want to meet them when there's like the German ones." And I'm like, "What?" Oh gosh, I didn't even think about that. Right, because of the um, the, uh, the 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 dialogue in various countries, the the languages they they obviously have different yeah. voice actors that are do, recording the dialogue in different languages. So, yeah, actually, I I can kind of see why they would think maybe not everyone would be familiar with the American actors that are. Well, but you'd think they'd at least, you know, put a, like, poll or something to ask, you know, if they would want the American ones, like, I mean, it's a bit... Yeah, that's true. ...not to, you know, at least ask, because, like, after I heard that personally from someone at Lucasfilm, I'm like, right, I'm going to find out about this, so I started texting, well, not texting, you know, Facebook <laughs> messaging, you know, Skype and all that, um, or, like, all the, all my German friends who like Star Wars, and I'm like, just I tell them basically what I've been told and they're like, what are they on? They're pretty much everyone was the same. It's like, I want to meet the, you know, actual, well, not the actual, that's a rude word in this context. 
and I want to meet the American cast, and I'm like, yeah, I know, right? What are they thinking? <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, I I didn't even think of that. That's right. So it's an entirely different cast depending on which country yeah. you go to and watch the show. So, but um, but yeah, I'm glad at least you got a chance to meet Ashley. Is she is she just like a total doll? Isn't she the sweetest girl? Yes. She is just a sweetheart. She's a really, really, really nice lady. I mean, just, just a real sweet lady. So, yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah, um, honestly, though, I have this uh, presumption or my guess, but I don't know. Considering they didn't bring any other Clone voice cast members over to Germany, I keep saying to myself in my head, like, that if it wasn't for her universe, they probably wouldn't have invited Ashley because, you know, it is kind of, you know, a Lucasfilm company now, or at least it's affiliated with them, you know what I mean? Right, right, yeah. yeah. Oh, see, yeah. I just keep, I, I don't even think they would have invited Ashley over if it wasn't for that. I mean, Floney, obviously, because he directs, uh, he directs, I mean, no matter where it's broadcast, you know, it's going to be the, you know... He's always, to, yeah, you know, he's always, yeah, he's always the... Director. Yeah. He's always he's always going to be the supervising director of it. Yeah, yeah, that doesn't the the, the production team doesn't change. It's just the the voice actors uh, yeah. that change from region to region. So yeah, yeah. But I'm glad at least they got Ashley over there. It's kind of, it's yeah. it's too bad that they didn't have more of the American cast. But I'm glad at least Ashley did since she was one of the lead actresses. So yeah. I did get to meet James uh, Taylor a few years ago at local event events so. oh he's awesome too him and um d bradley baker who does the voice of all the clones um incredibly talented people i mean incredibly ta- d d bradley baker is if you if you google him and look at his website and you listen to all the creature voices this guy can do he will blow your mind. I mean, he is so good. I, he's he's one of the best of the best in the industry <clears throat> down in LA. And the guy can do almost anything. And um, so, yeah, he voices all the clones. And then uh, uh, James Arnold Taylor, also incredibly talented, the voice of Obi-Wan Kenobi, and a great guy. In fact, actually, he recorded my outgoing voicemail message on my office phone when I was working at, nice. <laughs> at Lucasfilm. <laughs> it was awesome. He comes in, he goes, all right, who wants me to record their outgoing voicemail message? <laughs> and my hand went up, me, please. <laughs> That's brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> so I had Obi-Wan wow. Kenobi answering my phone for several years. So <laughs> That is so good. <laughs> wow. <laughs> uh. Yeah, <laughs> I wish I could get that, but I have kind of everything in life, just like, you know, with Kelly's death, can't have her alive. <laughs> I, really should, I really should have reminded myself about that. <laughs> <Aww>. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, I mean, that is just so amazing, though, you know. James O. Taylor recording the voicemail. Wow. And I'm sure he would do it for everybody if he could, if he had the time. I mean, he's just, they're, they're, they're all just really, really cool people. Really, really nice people. Very down to earth. Really love their craft. Um, and, and obviously, you know, or it was obvious to me that, that they really um, appreciated having the ability to bring joy to so many other people by, by um, giving life to these characters and carrying on the star Wars legacy and the clone wars, you know? So. Yeah. Uh, I can't help but notice you said you worked at Lucasfilm and not that you currently do. So bold question. Was it because Mm -hmm. of the Disney deal? (laughs) No, you know, and it's kind of funny because I started um I started getting really busy with the with the the actual professional voice work um and um even though I was still doing a lot of scratch voices for Lucasfilm and I enjoyed working there I started actually getting busy with outside um voice work and then I got involved in a in a really lengthy project that was going to go on for about a year and 
Lucasfilm was kind enough to give me um, a sabbatical, uh, uh, a um, uh, uh, some time off for about six months or so to go do this and then come back. Well, the, the, the project got extended to about a year. And, um, so I finally just had to decide, all right, am I going to go back to Lucasfilm or am I just going to try to make a go of this voice acting thing, uh, more vigorously and have that be my main focus. And I decided to, to, uh, give my notice and, and let Lucasfilm know that I wasn't going to come back. Um, And I did that. And the day after I did that, the Disney acquisition of Lucasfilm was announced. So it was kind of kismet, actually. (laughs) Interesting timing. (laughs) Yeah, it was really bizarre. I remember hearing about it. I was in a recording session and the news broke on the Associated Press that Disney had bought Lucasfilm. And the engineer that I was working with in the recording studio told me, and I was like, yeah, right, whatever, you know, like that'll never happen. I and know then the I, feeling. Yeah. I was like, ah, no, no, no. That, there's been rumors of that, you know, something like that happening for literally years and years. There's no way. No, no, no. Yeah. And then I looked at the, at the article and I went, holy boop, you know, I was like, Oh my God. Whoa. And then I get onto Facebook and then I start seeing all my friends and former co- coworkers at Lucasfilm, all these messages going, Oh my God. Oh my God. I can't believe this is happening. This is insane. Holy smoke. You know? And then, you know, then I knew, wow, this is real. This yeah. is really happening. And that was yeah. the day after I gave my notice. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah. It's kind of weird. I mean, yeah. At least I don't have to boycott Disney to get you your job back. Okay. It was your yeah, right. That's the thing. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, yeah. <laughs> so I can actually remember when I first heard the announcement as well that Disney had taken over. Like, you know, I don't pretend otherwise. You know, I do spend a good portion of my time on the internet, you know, researching news and all that. I don't miss much. Like, but mm-hmm. I want to say, it was in October 2012, I think. Um, yeah. And I was, I had just gone on, I think, a one or two week holiday um, uh, with some people of a local group, um, a youth group. Um, so, I mean, I didn't expect anything major to happen one holiday. In fact, it was the first week or two in a long time that I had, you know, spent a single day on the internet, you know. Um, and then and, look what uh, happens. I know, right? And like, I'm, it was like in the middle of that time. Um, I get, I'm just hanging out with a few of my friends. I get a text message. So I uh, take out my phone and look at it. It's from my dad. And I'm going back on to say this. My dad has a tendency to send a lot of jokey emails that aren't, aren't true at all. So, oh, so you didn't he, believe him at first. <laughs> he sends me it and I'm, he sends me it and I read the text and I, he's like, Disney by Star Wars, uh, episode seven to come out in 2015. I read it. I'm like, yeah, whatever. I put, yeah, my, phone right. away. <laughs> I put my phone away. Um, uh-huh. And like, I don't think much about it. two or three minutes later, maybe in five. I'm just like, uh, my, <laughs> I mean, I know he's probably pulling, pulling my leg, but you know, I have to be sure. So I take my phone out again. <laughs> I go onto the internet and I don't usually use my internet on the phone. And um, so I put, di- I put, go on Google and I look up Disney by Star Wars and there's literally thousands of articles in the last hour. And you just on, fell over. On the Google, <laughs> uh, on the, on the phone. And I'm just like, whoa, <laughs> that's actually true. Yeah. And they were really, really stealth about it. I mean, you know, when you're talking about yeah. huge multi-billion dollar deals, which is what this was, I think George sold the, sold the company lock, stock and barrel, I think for, uh, what was it? Four point three billion dollars. Yeah. Um, when you're talking about deals involving crazy amounts of money like that, um, which actually I think Disney still got a bargain. Quite quite honestly, four point three billion dollars for all of that licensing and all of the everything that goes along in the Star Wars universe going back thirty five years. That's I think I think 
they got a pretty good deal for four point three billion, honestly. But when yeah. you're talking about that large amount of money, you got to keep it quiet. <laughs> and they did yeah. a really good job keeping it quiet. But then Lucasfilm and Disney are two companies that are really well versed in keeping things under wraps until they absolutely are ready to let people know what's going on, you know? So it came as a shock to everybody, including the employees who, uh, at Lucasfilm who only really heard about it, I think maybe an hour or two before the Associated Press got a hold of it. Yeah. I mean, you um, yourself didn't even know a day in I didn't, advance, yeah. which is when you left your job. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, I, I didn't hear about it till like, you know, till everybody else did for the most part, you know? So, um, so yeah, my jaw was on the floor, but it, you know, it in a way it kind of makes sense though, because Lucasfilm and, and, and Disney have a history that goes pretty far back. Um, they've, you know, there's been a lot of cross licensing, um, between, you know, the Disney characters and the star Wars characters. And, you know, there's, there's been the, the attractions at Disneyland and Disney world. And so there's, there's been kind of a a creative meshing between the two companies for decades. Um, but even still, I, you know, I would say, I would guess that, 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 uh, a, a huge percentage of people were, were totally caught off guard by that. So I dropped my phone. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> yeah. Yeah. and if i had been holding one i would have dropped mine too yeah so. i know like it's just one of those moments where you're holding something and you're in such shock that you don't even realize it like you lose control of, of all your yeah you lose yeah. control of all your bodily functions all at once and then just mayhem <laughs> yeah pretty much like and all my friends were like just staring at the phone on the floor and they're like rory watch your phone and i'm like what, what did somebody die <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, just my heart. My heart died. That's what just happened. <laughs> yeah. Um. Yeah. Still crazy to even think about it now. It's like it's a year and a half now, and it's still sometimes it's hard to sink in just a little bit. <laughs> yeah. So, are you are you excited uh, by the uh, by episodes uh, seven, eight, and nine coming out? I'm the same way I am about just about everything in life, cautiously optimistic. Yes, yeah, yeah. Me too, me too. Yeah. I yeah, mean, I, I just have that thing where I never get excited for anything or never not look forward to something. I'm just cautious about it. Like, if it's good, I love it. If it's bad, well, it's bad. I can forget about it. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I I think it's going to be really really interesting to see what JJ Abrams do, does with this opportunity, you know. Um yeah. someone I, you know, someone recently suggested um what it would have been like if instead of JJ Abrams if they had gotten Ridley Scott to do it. And I thought, "Ooh, that's a really cool idea." You know, the director of Alien. Um I wonder, I mean, I think, I, I don't know. I, I like JJ Abrams and I think, um, I, I think, and I hope that he will do, he will do right by, by Star Wars. I, I'm sure he will. Um, it'll be interesting to see his take on it. Um, but yeah, the, 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 the thought of Ridley Scott is extremely intriguing to me what he would have done. I have a feeling it probably would have been a lot darker, <laughs> <laughs> uh had he yeah. been involved in it but um disney would have probably thrown a fit <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah that, yeah i don't really see ridley scott and disney together necessarily yeah. but um but the thought is pretty intriguing though but it'll be very interesting to see what jj J. abrams do- does with this um i know that when there was a screening of uh his um star trek uh the movie um a few years ago when that came out what was that in 2010 late late 2009 um uh no 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 it was early 2009 i'm sorry i think it was like february of 2009 um we got a screening of it at skywalker ranch uh and i remember sitting in in the audience in the because George has a has a a private 
theater at Skywalker Ranch that, of course, has insane sound. It's all THX, you know, amazing sound in there. And um, we would get invited to some of these screenings. And so J.J. Abrams had his Star, uh, his Star Trek film screened there. And George was in the audience. He was sitting like a couple of rows uh, in front of me. And, um, you know, everybody applauded at, at the end of it. And I, you know, I know George seemed, you know, he appeared to enjoy it. So it, it's not terribly surprising to me that um, J.J. Abr- Abrams ended up being the director that was hired to direct, you know, episode seven. So uh, and I wouldn't be at all surprised if George had a little input in that because I think he still is a creative consultant yeah, for, he is. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, that wouldn't surprise me if he was involved in, in picking JJ Abrams to direct. So, um, I don't know that for sure, but that's what I'm guessing. Yeah. So, probably. so it'll be interesting. It'll be interesting. We'll keep our fingers crossed. <laughs> yeah. Fingers, toes, no, wait, nose. Really? I can't cross that. <laughs> <laughs> um yeah um, so my final question is do you have any upcoming acting roles or other projects you like to talk about um well i have upcoming projects unfortunately i can't really talk much about them but are you uh, sure yeah um, how much do i need to bribe you <laughs> <laughs> um i you know my my um acting career kind of kind of spans a lot of different um avenues uh not just video games but commercials and um technology as well and and um one of the major things i have been working on involves a um a tech company in silicon valley here um nothing really that i'm able to talk about but um but uh yeah i i i always have you know, several, several irons in the fire or trying to get in the fire. So, but if I, if, if at some point in the future, I am able to talk more, I will definitely let you know. Thanks for that, I guess. (laughs) (laughs) Was that a big enough answer for you? (laughs) Yes, it was perfectly vague. I'm used to it. (laughs) (laughs) I'm sure you are. (laughs) Yeah. It comes with the field work. (laughs) Wait, that's that's what this podcast is. It's field work. Yeah. I don't think I I don't have to go outside much for it. <laughs> <laughs> it's figuratively field work. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I mean yeah. the kind of the, the the nature of 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 a lot of our work is it tends to be secretive, you know, going back to that, you know, production companies having to be really good about keeping things under wrap until they are absolutely ready to release it to the public and we you know Oftentimes, uh, we voice actors have to sign our lives away you know, <laughs> on non-disclosure agreements, and with you know being uh, with lawsuits being held over our heads if we dare breathe a word to anybody about anything. So you know, we're always having to shut up about something. So <laughs> makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> they know we we they know that voice actors like to talk, so they have to make sure that we don't blab to anybody about anything. So we have to sign all these crazy documents and everything swearing that we won't. So, but, but um, especially when it's a big project, you know, like something Star Wars related, walking dead, you know, yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah. It's always the big franchises that are like, here, you have to sign this NDA. Make exactly. sure you sign it before you leave, or you don't leave. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, or you don't leave. That's the operative. Uh- <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, I, I, I would be more than happy to, uh, to, uh, let you know if, uh, if and when I'm able to start, uh, yakking about something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that would be great. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, thank you very much for answering all my questions. And Nicole, I think that's all of the questions we have for you. So hopefully we can talk again at some point when you're, ready to talk more i mean come on <laughs> okay. come on we only we only talk for an hour today i'm sure next time will be longer <laughs> <laughs> yeah you got it anytime and it, it was yeah. it was uh, it was really fun um 
being on the podcast and getting a chance to finally talk to you. We've emailed back and forth a few times, so it's nice to actually hear your voice and talk to you. And and uh, hopefully uh, your listeners out there enjoyed it as well. Yeah. Well, I'm sure they didn't enjoy listening to me, but no, I'm sure oh, they enjoyed hearing your experiences. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <Yeah. laughs> well, thanks again. I, I actually yeah. really did have a good time. And, and uh, yeah, party yeah. on. <laughs> yeah no it's it you know i've never had this problem before i'm not sure whether i should say may the force be with you or watch it for the walkers but never had that problem before how about may the walkers be with you <laughs> yeah that works and may the walkers be with you then so talk to you soon bye <laughs> all right bye-bye check out our website website.everythinggeekpodcast.com slash egp Check out our Facebook page, www.facebook.com slash everythinggeekpodcast. Check out our YouTube channel, www.youtube.com slash user slash everythinggeekcast. Check us out on Twitter, twitter.com slash everythinggeekp. Check us out on Instagram, instagram.com slash official everythinggeekpodcast. Check out our Mixcloud profile, www.mixcloud.com slash everythinggeekpodcast email us at the following email everythinggeekpodcast at gmail.com check out our companion podcast everything geek comic cast www.facebook.com slash everything geek comic cast make sure to check out the host's youtube channels mine is www.youtube.com slash user slash septus destroyers check out nicole vigil's website www.nickvigil.com and check out channel 1 on Fiat wave podcast live from www.channel 1 so geeks out everyone no um i had just started my career as a voice actor and katya was actually my first role like out the gate um, and I was so excited. I mean, it was The Walking Dead. It's like the biggest thing since Star Wars, you know? So I was really excited and uh, going, getting to go to London and being nominated alongside Dave. Like, what? That was just crazy. It was such a good time. And, you know, obviously the game itself has won, what is it? I think it's like over 90. Yeah. Game over. Of-